so far we have discussed uh, dislocation geometry and stress field and the dislocations uh, in the last class. Now we will try to further explain the next step, the how to dissociate the dislocation or how dislocation reaction happen so that two dislocation can react with each other and making a some new dislocations and what are the typical dislocation mechanics generally we observe and how we can explain that the different uh, phenomena by the using the concept of the dislocations. So to do that uh, we'll uh, just uh, forward to these things and we discuss with the dissociation or combination of the dislocations. So this may be very significant to understand the energy level associated with the dislocation and whether one full dislocation can be dissociated into two small dislocation or two partial dislocation can be associated to form a another dislocation. So this type of interaction of the dislocation is quite possible during the plastic deformation of the materials. So today's uh, teaching will be focused on these things and it will touch on the basic concepts on different type of interaction of the dislocation. So let us look into that uh, actual key points related to the association or dissociation of the dislocations. What we understand the dislocation is that full or partial lattice translations and we have discussed that in age dislocation that there is a shifting of the one plane of the atoms and that shifting one plane of the atoms can be considered as a full dislocation and represented by the Burgers vector. But we have not discussed if there is a partial dissociation of the dislocation in the sense that displacement of the atoms may follow other paths where there may be the change of the energy level for the whole dislocation. And to look into that, the associated of the energy levels, maybe we can further look into the fundamental understanding of the interaction or reaction of the different dislocations. So first thing I like to focus that in general dislocation line cannot end inside the crystal so most of the cases in practically when we analyze the movement of the dislocations in the in that case we consider one segment so that segment can start from one node to another node and that node actually the meeting point of the several dislocations so this is the first significant point where three or four dislocation lines meet that can be considered as a node point. Second important point is that at a node two dislocations with Burgers vector B1 and B2 they can combine to produce a resultant dislocation and having the Burgers vector B3. But how B1, B2 and B3 can be linked or can be represented? in terms of the mathematical equations. First thing is that it should satisfy that the resultant dislocation is a vector sum of the two dislocations that is B1 and B2 in this case. Of course dislocation with Burgers vector equal to one lattice spacing is generally considered as a dislocation of unit strength. So this can be, uh, we can remind that basically when you try to represent the age dislocation in that case that <coughs> we explain the Burgers vector simply shifting of the shortest repeat distance of the atoms. So that shortest repeat distance is represented up as, is a unit strength of the dislocation. Because of the energy consideration, definitely when you try to analyze the association, dissociation or different reaction of the dislocations, it is associated with the amount of the strain energy and during the reaction how there is a energy balance can be done in this case. 
so because of the energy consideration dislocation with st strength larger than the unity are generally unstable so that means that means the dislocation length of the more than unit strength is generally unstable in practically and it actually dissociated into two or more dislocations of relatively lower length but what may be the level of the energy when there is a reaction of the dislocation whether association or the dissociation of the dislocations we will try to look into that part now we come back come back to the very basic things that we have discussed the two basic elements of the dislocation it, that is edge dislocation and screw dislocation and we are trying to represent that all actual react dislocation reactions in terms of the edge and screw dislocations so dislocation have distortion energy associated with them we have already estimated that uh, what is the amount of the strain energy associated with either edge dislocation or screw dislocation and here we can see that edge and screw dislocation actually creates the amount of the compressive or stress field even when <coughs> there is a effect of the another adjacent dislocation is there accordingly it can create or stress field whether it is compressive or tensile and accordingly they can attract or they there may be the repulsion between the two dislocations that we have already discussed now if we, we can summarize the actually from the analysis of the dislocation energy associated with the basic elements of dislocation we can find out that screw dislocation is basically we have observed there exist only on the shear strain and the one shear stress <coughs> and then we found out that energy of the dislocation we divide into two components one is the elastic another is a non elastic the non elastic energy exists within the core of the dislocations and we have defined we can or that size of the core of a dislocation and normally that energy associated with the core is around 10% of the elastic energy of the dislocation so in general we can represent the energy of the dislocation per unit length using this equation e equal to half of g b square b is the here the burgers vector and of course dislocation always tend to have the burgers vector as minimum as possible and g is the shear modulus so we can say that energy per unit length is basically proportional to the square magnitude of the square of burgers vector so with this we can further analyze the dissociation of the dislocation in the sense that dislocation energy the total energy is actually proportional to its length so so far we have discussed that energy per unit length if half of g into b square but in this case total energy is basically l into half of g into b square so we can say that total energy of the dislocation is proportional to its length or it is equivalent to the line tension we have shown that energy part unit length is basically is equivalent to the line tension in case of the dislocation and another significant points we can find out that the this dislocation energy is actually proportional to the b square now when there is existence of the different parallel dislocations the two parallel dislocation can form another third dislocation when it can satisfy this equation that means vector sum of two dislocation is the third the resultant dislocation so in this case the reaction is 
energetically favorable if it lowers the energy of the system. But that feasibility of this reaction can be explained by using the Frank's rule of statement. It, sta it states that the reaction is favorable if B1 square plus B2 square greater than B3 square. That means basically it is trying to represent the energy level and we have already shown that dislocation energy is proportional to the B square and other term shear modulus term is a constant for all these cases. So if it is satisfied then this reaction is favorable. Reaction means it is basically association of the two dislocation B1 plus B2 will try to form the B3 if it actually lowers the energy level during this reaction. Similarly, a dislocation may spontaneously dissociate into two parallel dislocations if that means if B1 tends to form B2 plus sorry, B2 plus B3. So in this case, the B1 square, the energy of the dislocation is more than that of the energy of the two partial dislocations. So in this case, the reaction will be the favorable or that means dissociated into two conditions when they satisfy the state of the energy level according to the Frank's rule. So dislocation in crystals always tend to have the very small Burgers vector. Now we try to analyze that how dissociation or dislocation may happen in case of FCC crystal structure. To do that, we know that in FCC crystal lattice, the slip plane is defined by this one, one, one plane. So it is basically the one, one, one plane can be constructed like that. It's a along the x, y and z axis. If we add this three extreme point and we can find out this is the plane of the 111 in case of FCC structure. Now we know the shortest lattice vector is represented by A0 by 2 1110. What does it mean? It means that 110 basically shows the direction of the face diagonal and this face diagonal along the face diagonal there is a arrangement of the atoms is like this and the repeat distance is half of the face diagonal and that we can represent the Barker vector along the phase diagonal is by this A0 by 2, 1, 1, 0. So A0 is the lattice parameter in case of FCC structure. Now if we look into the atomic arrangement on the 1, 1, 1 plane, it shows the figures that the stacking sequence or the sequence of the atoms is like that. First there is a layer all the layer is having layer A specific sequence of the atoms. Then next layer is that it follows another sequence of the atoms B and another layer sequence of the atom is C. So it follows like that A, B, C, A, B, C kind of stacking sequence. Now figures also the right hand side figure also shows the this stacking sequence and we can see that how slip will happen on this stacking on this plane but remember that this 
stacking sequence A B C A B C like that on F C C structure, it is actually normal to that one 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 plane. So along this stacking sequence, we'll try to explain that how the slip may happen in case of F C C structure, or we try to represent the dis dissociation of the dislocations. Now the figures if we focus on these figures we see this figure shows actual atomic arrangement of the unit cell in FCC structure corner atoms are there face atoms are there now here we define one 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 plane so this plane actually define the one 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 plane And on this one 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 plane, if we see that how the reaction will happen here. So this is the dis actual Barker's vector of the dislocation. That means the dislocation associated with the FCC structure. So, this dislocation, the atoms may slip along the direction from this point to that point. So, this actually, this arrow, the red color, this actually represents the, represents the full dislocation or that is represented in terms of the dislocation of the unit strength. So, that dislocation of the unit strength actually consists of the two partial dislocations that how to represent these two partial dislocation in this case if you look into right hand side figures. So there is a displacement of the atoms or layer of the atoms from one point to another point and that is the full dislocation or dislocation of the unit strength. Now the dissociation of the dislocation can follow some other path. It can follow the other two paths like this from this point to that point and here from that point to another point and it comes back to the position so it is like that the if this arrow indicates the actual dislocation or dislocation of the full strength then this path can consist of the another two path this is one path and it is another path. So, if we say if it is B1 Burger's vector and it consists of the two partials B2 and B3, then the dislocation reaction B1 B2 plus B3, how we want to physically how we can explain this happening of the favorable condition of the reaction of dislocation. Here if we see that it consists of the two partial dislocation and that two partial dislocation is basically represented along this direction. One is along one to one direction and that is two one one direction. So here the one to one direction is basically this direction. That means on a two dimensional plane it is represented along this is the one to one direction and another two one one is, it is a another direction and finally it is the part the reaction is B1 and this is corresponding to B2 and another is the corresponding to B3. So the partials has represented other by two different partials in the I think it is in the on the same plane but two different directions. Now we we'll look into that whether this reaction is feasible or not. Now if we look into analyze this thing from the Frank's rule here we can find out that B1 square is greater than B2 square plus B3 square. We can easily estimate the Burger's vector from the this 
uh, from this looking into the uh, reaction. So this is corresponding to B1, corresponding to B2 and you can investigate this thing that B1 S square is 1, 2 and B2 plus B3 square is 1, 3. That means that this if it is follow this direct path or along the full dislocation then energy level is more as compared to the other two paths that means B2 plus B3. So definitely if with this reaction there is a decrease of the energy level so that actually indicates the favorable condition. So, so that we can say that this kind of dislocation dissociation is possible in case of FCC structure. Now in general we can say from the dissociation of the dislocation in case of FCC structure and we found out that definitely there is another way that B Parker's vector represents this defines one of the observed slip direction in FCC structure and the same shear displacement as produced by B1 can accomplished by the two partials or two step path so that means B2 and B3. So what does it mean that same path can be represented by another two path B2 plus B3. The latter displacement is more energetically favorable but it causes the perfect dislocation to decompose into two partial dislocation that we have already observed that it is energy energetically favorable and we can find out that B1 is consist of the B2 plus B3. So this reaction can be represented in this way. So this is the actual reaction where one full dislocation is dissociated in two partials in case of FCC structure. And of course we can observe whether it is uh, energetic energetically favorable or not. So if we look into that there is a first original dislocation or maybe the dislocation of the unit strain is represented like this B1 we have estimated the Burgers vector by looking into that reaction and it found out that B1 S square equal to A0 square by 2 A0 is the lattice parameter and product reaction that means two partials in this case B2 and B3 we can found out B2 and B3 is like that and finally we can say that B2 square greater than uh, sorry B1 square greater than B2 square plus B3 square. That means that reaction is its the energy level actually in favor to cause of this dislocation reaction. We can further make uh, conclusion that dislocation dissociation in case of FCC structure that sleep by this two stage process creates actually the stacking fault uh, that means A, B, C, A there is a missing of the layer of the B then C again A, B, C is the stacking sequence. So with this actually the with the partial dissociation of the dislocation is the link with the creation of the stacking fault and we will try to link that the dislocation reaction or dislo dissociation of the dislocations in terms of the stacking fault and how we can link and the, what are the energy level all we can estimate. Now if we look that dislocation with Burgers vector B1 has been dissociated in the two partials B2 and B3 we have observed the dislocation reaction actually suggested by the uh, head in ridge and the shock lay. So therefore this kind of dislocation arrangement is actually known as the shock lay partials. So since it is the 
one full dislocation consists of the two partials and it is the imperfect ones that's why it is called the partial dislocation and which do not produce the complete lattice translation that we have observed it doesn't complete the complete lattice translation so it is called the partial so that means one full, full dislocation can be dissociated into the two partial dislocations so we look into the further dislocation reaction in case of fcc structure but in the if we consider the pure s dislocation how it happens in case of the fcc structure now s dislocation means we have we have explained that there is a displacement of the one layer of the atoms and that or if there is a extra half plane with the regular arrangement of the atoms is inserted then the displacement actually happens and that the displacement of this repeat distance is considered as a burger vector in the case of s dislocation and of course in case of s dislocation the burger vector is perpendicular to the dislocation line now how you represents this dislocation in a unit cell of the fcc structure so it is obvious that one one slip plane is defined here and we consider that one minus one zero actually the extra half of the plane and with the extra half of the plane there is a displacement of the atoms so if we consider there is a another layer of the atoms parallel to this and if we found out it is the the actually this the shifting of the one layer of the atoms from one point to another point or, or that along the shortest repeat distance that is the actually burger vector in case of s dislocation of fcc structure now this is the burger vector half of minus 110 on 111 plane this is because of the extra half of the plane and the dislocation line is here half of 1 minus 1 minus 1 2 so this represents the dislocation line vector and the burger vector and fc that burger vector and the dislocation line vector they are perpendicular with each other and the plane 1 minus 1 0 actually represents the extra half plane if we look into the very basic structure of the s dislocation that we have already discussed now we can look into that s dislocation in case of bcc structure so there are several slip planes in case of bcc structure as well but here we try to see that extra half of the plane is represented by here 1 1 1 plane and if we see that other plane so it is the 1 minus 1 0 so when there is a from 0 plane that means it that plane is actually parallel to the one of the axis so here it is parallel to the z axis so 1 minus 1 plane have been inclined the unit plane along x and y direction but it is parallel to the z direction and if we see that along on this plane 1 minus 1 0 plane the extra half of the plane is inserted 1 1 that is 1 1 1 plane and that actually represents the uh system of the s dislocation and we can compare with the very basic structure of the s dislocation in case in a units uh, in case of the bcc structure and if we, we see that here the burger vector is represented along this direction so that is the 1 1 1, 1 direction so basically 1 1 1 direction is the i think it is in the along the body diagonal direction and this is the schematic representation of the uh, <coughs> s dislocation in case of bcc structure 
and we can see further how we can represent so it represents one plane and the perpendicular to the plane there is a uh, the edge dislocation may happen and dislocation line represents here in this case is the 1 minus 1 minus 1 2 this is the direction of the dislocation line vector and if you look into that two dimensional figure here you can see that this is the uh, Burgers vector in the in case of pure edge dislocation of BCC structure and here the dislocation line and Burgers vector is actually perpendicular with each other. Now we just simply summarize the dislocation of the uh, dissociation of the dislocation in case of FCC structure and we are representing this structure in the different way that slip occurs on 1 1 1 plane and 1 1 1 0 1 1 0 direction in case of FCC structure. Now from the group of planes or the from the group of direction we can pick up one specific plane and one specific direction and we can find out the Burgers vector is represented this A by 2 minus 1 1 1 0. So this Burgers vector actually along that we have already explained along the along that specific direction this is the shortest repeat distance or the consecutive distance between the uh, two atoms that is represented by a by 2 minus 1 1 0 and this is the reaction so one full dislocation can be dissociated into two partials and in terms of b1 consists of the p2 plus b3 now here b1 in terms of the coordinate maybe we can represent b1 minus a by 2 a by 2 0 b2 is like that and b3 also in the similar way and we can found out that uh, in FCC corresponding to the phase slip displacement is B equal to A by 2 1 1 so that is the full. So in this case what is the uh, how we can decide that feasibility of the reaction. So to do that we need to consider the two points first point is that when the, the two reaction will happen then that we try to make is the it should be the vector sum of the resultant or just vice versa also if one dissociated into the two partials or two partial dislocation can associate it in the one dislocation. So in both the cases it should satisfy the vector sum or the one single dislocation is vector sum of the two partials that should follow and second thing we need to check the feasibility of the energy level whether it is decrease or whether it is increase accordingly we can decide whether reaction will happen or not. So with this dissociation of the dislocation or association of the dislocation actually it is more or less associated with the stacking fault of a crystal structure. Stacking fault means we understand that stacking faults means there is a missing of the simply one layer of the atoms. So it may not follow the sequence in case of the different structure. Now come to that point link try to link the association or dissociation of dislocation with the stacking fault. Let us see how it links with the stacking fault energy in case of the simple cubic structure. Now that we have observed A by 6, 1, 1, 2 actually one of the partial dislocation generally we observe in case of the FCC structure. So with the presence of these partials, the stacking sequence on the 1, 1, 1 plane actually does not belong to the normal FCC lattice. We will try to explain these things with the presence. So there is maybe the stacking sequence actually change with the presence of this partials. So it may be shift to the ACP structure. Second point is that correct stacking order is not restored until the 
second partial dislocation passes that means presence of the one partials uh, <coughs> may not be the very stable cases until and unless the second partial exists accordingly then the correct sequence of the stacking may not be the restored but with the presence of this partials the stacking fault presence of the partials that means creation of the stacking fault actually the increases the energy level since this is not an equilibrium structure but this amount of the energy increment depends of the area of the fault that means area of the stacking fault now it can be like that that if gamma sf actually represents the energy part area of the stacking fault and regarded as the surface tension pulling the partial dislocation we can consider this amount of energy and that we can estimate for the different kind of crystal structure and it has been shown in that cases that stacking fault energies of the several FCC metals in terms of milli, uh, <coughs> millijoule per meter square. If you see that silver, aluminium, gold, copper is basically uh, most of the common materials. We see aluminium is having very high stacking fault energy as compared to the other materials. Now, this is the simply statistics of the stacking fault energy. Now, from this uh, stacking fault energy of the different type of materials, we can conclude the uh, several uh, statement here. First thing is that the mutual repulsion of the two partials tends to drive them away from each other. Therefore, balancing this mutual repulsion is the attraction that actually results from the surface tension of the stacking fault between them. Similarly, similarity of the packing sequence at a twin boundary and stacking fault is very much clear from the figure that we will try to explain in the next slide. But most of the materials we found the stacking fault energy is actually two times of the twin boundary energy. So that means presence of the stacking fault can create the twin boundary. We we'll just look into the things. So this is the simply stacking of the close packed planes. Uh, and assuming that this is the close packed plane of the FCC structure. And that that plane actually this plane is actually exists on FCC structure actually on the 111 plane. Now stacking of the close pack planes we know the stacking sequence of the ACP crystal structure is like that A B A B in that sequence that means there is a two layer and the repetition of the layers in but in case of FCC structure we can C B A C B A C B A like that that means there is a three different layers, sequence of the atoms and there is a repetition of the sequence of the atoms. But FCC with a stacking fault, how it can create? So if we see there is a missing of the one layer due to the stacking fault, then we can see the AC again AC. So then up to that AC, AC that actually resembles the stacking sequence of the ACP structure. So, presence of the one partial that creates the stacking fault in the FCC structure in that part actually which is equivalent to the stacking sequence of the ACP structure. Now, if the stacking sequence or partials dislocation exists in such a way that the stacking sequence is like that BCA, BCA, C, B A. So that means this part actually represents, if you see 
that BC, AC, BC, A and ACB that means with respect to the stacking sequence or layer A there is a mirror image in between that or symmetrical in the upper side and lower side BC again CB. So that type of sequence actually creates the twin boundary. Now we have observed that presence of the stacking fault in case of FCC structure the energy is associated with the can be seen from the table and we just get some idea that what is the amount of the energy and the relative amount of the energy between the two metals can uh, <coughs> exist in terms of the st stacking fault. Now if you look into further analysis on the stacking fault, the frequency of the annealing twins that means twins is the one kind of the fault is much higher in FCC metals of low stacking fault energy than this of that of higher stacking fault energy. So of course the stacking fault energy between the silver and copper aluminum is not much but relative to the low stacking fault energy the frequency of the frequency of the annealing twins we observe much in FCC metals. Annealing twins in microstructure of aluminum alloy is rare because in aluminum the stacking fault energy is actually very high. So in this case the twins generally rarely observed in case of aluminum alloy. So if we summarize this thing the normal stacking sequence of 111 plane in the FCC crystal can be described as ABC, AB. So this is just to remind this part the stacking sequence we have explained in case of FCC structure that is the normal to that plane 111. Second one partials A by 6, 112 actually it is a one of the partials that can dissociate from the full dislocation in case of FCC structure in this uh, the stacking sequence is changed to A, B, A, B, C. So that means there is a absence of the, the layer of the sequence C. So that actually this stacking sequence changes due to the uh, this partials in case of the FCC structure. So, so here we have tried to the basic understanding of the how the dislocation reactions happens in case of uh, FCC structure and BCC structure and basically how we can uh, <coughs> uh, how we can explain that uh, the reaction will be possible in terms of the energy level during the during the reaction and whether there may be the association of the two partials and whether dissociation of the one full dislocations and how, uh, how but how they can interact with each other that actually becomes more complex. So we just uh, focus only on the basic understanding of the dissociation of the dislocations and from these elements now we will try to shift in the next topic for the dislocation mechanics. So we have the idea now that uh, different dislocations and the basic types of dislocation that means edge and screw dislocations and how this how the what is the amount of the energy associated with the dislocation and when they react with each other what may be the stress field it can create and what type of stress is subjected to in edge or screw dislocations all looking into the basic ideas or basic understanding on these things we will try to explain the different dislocation mechanics with this background. Let us look into that first question that when single crystal deform, what is the consequence of the dislocation? If single crystal plastically we deform one single crystal, what will happen to the dislocation? What may be the changes of the dislocation, their movement, their change of the energy level or how they interact with the surrounding dislocations or is there any increment of is there any generation of the dislocation with the further plastic deformation of the material that will try to link the deformation and what happens to the 
dislocation during the plastic deformation of a single crystal structure. So first, already we have discussed the Frank Reed source. This is the dislocation generation mechanism, and we can explain using the Frank Reed source mechanism. So here it can be like that. So suppose shear stress is acting on a plane, will create the dislocation to bow. So for example, this is the length of the dislocation and that segment of the dislocation we can consider of length D between the two node points. And if we see what are the uh, forces acting on these things, so we have already estimated tau P is the frictional resistance of the dislocation movement per unit length. So this is the amount, tau B is the amount of the force when we multiply by length D, actually this indicates the total force acting on the dislocation. Now at the node, node point, what may be the reaction forces in this case? So we have already explained that half G B square can be considered as a line tension and if you look into it, it is the line tension and it is equivalent to the force here. So at two node point the line tension is acting actually half of the G B square on the on this dislocation. Now here this dislocation at this nodal point actually this this we can say the equivalent force actually equal to the uh, energy per unit length on this nodal point which is equivalent equivalent to the force here. So if we consider the vertical component you can define the angle theta and two vertical components are there half of G B square sin theta into two. So the when dislocation it should be total G B square sin theta. Now when dislocation is bow in such a way that theta becomes 90 degree. Then in this case the maximum force will be acting equal to G B square here. And we see that of course in this case the shear stress is actually acting to the parallel to the Burgers vector and the if we balance the force total force uh, with the vertical component we can find out their shear stress equal to gb by d that means stress necessary to operate frank reed source is actually inversely proportional to the dislocation segment length d here in this case so of course in this case proportional to the burgers vector b and the shear stress proportional to the 1 by d so with this mechanism actually there is a creation of the dislocation and uh, this is just to show the calculation when there is a bowing happens actually in 90 degree but if we do further uh, plastic deformation of a single crystal then actually it multiply by the dislocation and then it acts as a uh, or it can be explained as a generation of the dislocation by this mechanism. So that generation of the dislocation by this mechanism we have already discussed. Here we can show the only the mathematical calculation here. So second thing is that now we try to explain the basic terminology in the used that is called one is the dislocation piles up and that terminology actually happens due to the plastic deformation of the uh, movement of the dislocation. Now dislocation source come to an obstacle such as grain boundary or hard particle they actually tend to form the pile up. So it, due to the plastic deformation formation when the dislocation will try to move if there exists an kind of such kind of obstacle like grain boundary or hard particle then that actually resists the dislocation movement and gradually the dislocation may pile up one position and in this case the like sign or the same sign signature either positive or negative edge dislocations or we can say the left hand screw dislocation or right hand screw dislocation 
the similar sign dislocation they actually repel with each other and that repulsion of the dislocation in the piles up can be represented like this so total shear stress actually can be linked in this case that n number of dislocation in this case and the tau is the corresponding to the shear stress of each dislocation and this is the actual estimation of the repulsion of that dislocation in terms of the shear stress. Now a pile up creates actually the dislocation creates some backup stress. So that stress to continue to operate the to rise up. So if there is exist on the barrier and we apply for the dislocation moves with certain point and around the barrier there is a resistance of the dislocation and with the resistance of the dislocation actually creates the backup stress and is actually creates the amount of the total amount of the stress. So this kind of phenomena is actually generally known as dislocation piles up. It takes relatively small number in the pile up to effectively stop further dislocation movements. That means with a few number of dislocations the piles up can be uh, generated <coughs> okay, so uh, to stop the further dislocation movement. Second thing is the cross slip. This is one of the elementary thing associated with the dislocation movement. A dislocation cannot move on a plane unless the, unless the plane contains both the dislocation and its Barker spectrum. That is true and in case of edge dislocation we can we can see that Barker spectre is actually perpendicular to the dislocation and that actually Barker spectre and the dislocation line they can create one or they can define the slip plane. But it is not the case in case of the screw dislocation because screw dislocation is parallel the Barker spectre is parallel to the dislocation line. So there is no restriction to a well defined slip plane in case of screw dislocation. So in this case screw dis when the screw dislocation actually gliding on one plane they can easily change to another and then it is called set to the cross slip because in case of the screw dislocation there is no well defined we cannot define a slip plane like edge dislocation. So in principle screw dislocation should be able to cross slip with ease to avoid any obstacles. In this case the screw dislocation is actually separated into partials and connected to the stacking fault. If we consider that partials in case of partials of a screw dislocation then fundamentally we can say that both partials cannot be screws and they must be recombined to form a screw dislocation before they dissociated on a second plane. So that kind of recombination actually increases the total energy level and this energy is supplied by the applied stress and sometimes it is added by the thermal activation. Now if stacking fall energy is high then separation of the partial dislocation is actually small. So force required to cause the recombination is also low. So from that point we can make some conclusive statement that high stacking fault energy for example aluminium cross slip occurs very frequently but low stacking fault energy actually cross slip is very rare. So the separation of the partial is large and high force is required to bring them together. Now we shift to the next elementary topic on the dislocation movement that is dislocation intersections. So dislocation intersection we simply understand that if there is a number of dislocation increase so deformation process and definitely their movement of the dislocation becomes more difficult. So this increased difficulty of movement is actually caused by the intersection 
of the dislocations when they are moving on the different planes and different directions. So dislocation moves on different planes. Early glide, the rate of work hardening is low and slip occurs in parallel plane and there are few intersections. So that happens is the very initial stage. Now when slip occurs or maybe when slip occurs on more than one set of the slip planes, in this case dislocation on different planes actually will in intersect each other and they actually resist further movement or further motion of the dislocation and in that case they actually cause the rapid work hardening of the material. Now we come to the point of dislocation that is dislocation climb and you can see the dislocation climb is actually the movement of an edge dislocation out of its plane due to the diffusional flux of atoms. It can come from the away or towards the dislocation. Such motion is actually called climb. So it happens removal of the atoms from the dislocation cause upward climb. So if you look into this picture, removal of the atoms actually cause the dislocation move upward and addition of the atoms to the dislocation actually cause downward climb. So in this case diffusion control climb actually allows dislocation to avoid sometimes to avoid the obstacles that impede their glide motion and may become a controlling mechanism in case of specifically the creep process. So the creep process which is very much important only at the elevated temperature and during the during uh, trip. So this basic elemental terms of the dislocation mechanics like climb, dislocation intersection, cross slip and dislocation piles up and plank root source of the all the typical mechanisms of the dislocation movement is actually is very much useful to explain that different mechanism even it is in the mechanism of the plastic deformation of the materials and it helps to explain the different phenomena that happens during the plastic deformation of a material. So with this we can con conclude the topic this dislocation mechanics and uh, as well as uh, dislocation intersection so association of the association or the or the dissociation of the dislocations so thank you very much for your kind attention